Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Gentleman's Chat. I'm Andrew O'Brien, the temporary host until I disappear for another three months. And to the... Um, I'm gonna say... I think technically you're to the left of me, Ryan. Technically. Okay. So to the... So I'm to the left of you, and hello, I'm Ryan. In terms of, like, actual physical location on the map. <laughs> okay. Thank you for pointing that out. You're welcome. And then... And to the sort of right of me is is our other... Like, to the right, a little behind. Yeah. I'm Thompson, yeah. Awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad we had this. That was good, right? Yeah, that was good. We can keep that? Yeah, we can keep that. We'll, we're we're going to keep going. It's still okay. recording. Let's, let's do this. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and talk about what's been going on since last week we had a, um, a malfunction in uh, sound and spatial time continuum things. One, mm. one of our... One of our tracks was 5% slower than the rest of our tracks, and mm. another person's track was too hot or very, very loud, and it was just all over the place, so we apologize for not providing a uh, podcast last week, but Brock and I were on another podcast called The Filter Podcast, which you should go check out. It's, it's pretty swanky, but... Um, yeah, so, Andrew, how have you been? What have you been up to? Well, um, I've finally moved into into my own apartment. Nice. Um, so, I no longer sleep behind a couch, and I'm not I'm not just like an eyesore in someone's someone's actual home. I. I have my own eyesores in my own home now. <laughs> what? And, uh... <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna clean them up. But... Okay. Anyway, things are good. Work is... just as insane as usual. Mm -hmm. And, um... I've been thinking about a, a few ideas for, uh, some, uh, sketches and other videos that maybe we can start some work on here in the near future that that sounds I hope I can, we can bring to your visual visual uh, viewing pleasure. visual and in gestures yes oh well, be sure to optic. be sure to hold on to those ideas we'll uh, surely bring them up in the cold front uh Thompson what about you what have you been up to um just took a really big bite of steak cool is that it? Uh, I've been working nights, and uh, that's about it for now. Okay. Okay. Well, um, as for me, I have been working as well. I recently got um, the camera that I was talking about, and I will soon be uh, putting into production some some projects so and also taking pictures and uh doing stuff like that but we'll talk more about that and of course the section that we all know love and care for and that is the cold front no noise i'm not doing it <laughs> and there we go that's the cold front so let's go ahead and talk about uh what's coming out on the cold front um i'll go ahead and talk about um what I got going, and then Andrew can talk about uh, some of his ideas. Um, like I said earlier, uh, I will start uh, producing some projects that I have talked about early on. I think, actually, I was talking about them in last week's, but since last week's never happened, I'll go ahead and bring them up again. Um, I'm thinking about doing... I was talking about the best... A while ago I was talking about the best DDR songs or best Bamani songs. Now I'm going to do the worst Bamani songs. And that's going to be the first thing that I'm going to be working on. After that, I'm thinking about doing some sort of choose your own adventure and uh, 
We've talked about that before. I remember mm -hmm. as a group we've talked about that before. Really in depth, actually. Yeah, it was really in depth, and I would like to see if I can kind of try my hand at it, uh, get the whole programming, because it is kind of like programming, get that whole programming um, of different outcomes down. And then the third thing that I'm thinking about doing is a process doc well not so much a process documentary but a documentary regarding a DDR. There's two DDR related projects and then this choose your own adventure. Um, and I'm also thinking about doing um, some I guess not uh, well for my website I'm, I'm gonna start doing more uh, video blog style uh, segments which I would like to start producing soon. But as for now, that's what I'm doing for Cold Morning. Uh, Andrew, go ahead and tell us about uh, your ideas. Um, well, I've so like I've said, I recently moved into in an apartment, um, and I don't know. I guess that whole I mean that that whole process was I guess liberating in more than one way. Um, because it feels like I'm, I can actually think and be creative again, which is rather foreign now, I guess, because it's, I mean, I'd almost lived at my brother's place for almost a year, actually. Yeah. Wow. wow. Anyway. Um, so as I was moving in, I noticed that probably less than a foot away from my front door uh, was a hornet's nest and it just had I mean one hornet is enough hornets yeah but like you know, like 12 hornets not that I counted but I eyeballed it that's 12 12 times the enoughness so People would say it's more than enough. Yeah. Okay. But um, some people might say eight is enough. True. That's four more than eight. That is. Yeah. It's, it's, that's another another half half of eight added on. Two My or God. Four. Anyway. Okay. Um. So <clears throat> I was I was thinking about doing like a short. A really, a really short series, maybe like six or seven episodes of um, like 30 to 45 second clips of basically the character who I guess we'll just go ahead and call me, um, my, my, my interactions and tribulations that, that involve the, the hornet's nest. Mm -hmm. And really the whole series is going to be about, like, living next to a, a, a time bomb and the mental anxiety that comes along with that. Yeah. And it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be funny, and I'm sure, I'm sure it could be quite humorous. I, that's, that's one of my, I do really like doing stuff like that where you take the mundane or very regular and turn them into something unnecessarily complicated. I mean, I have to agree. That's 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 a kind of humor that I really enjoy as well. Um, just taking something that you wouldn't really expect to have this this crazy outcome with, and yet it does, and that's a, a something. And I, I look forward to this coming into existence. So, um, the other idea, idea I have, and sorry if. If I'm not allowed to go this long. No, you. If we don't. We don't censor this. You can. I mean, all. All that we have to worry about is if. If those listeners out there, our lucky listeners, are still listening to our soul. Soul voices. Yeah, and, and plus, I never say anything in the cold front, so you. Uh, you can have my time. All right. Well. So the other idea I've been having is. Um, it's called quitting, and uh, it's actually about. Um, it's not about like jobs or anything. It's just about being addicted to something, 
mm -hmm. and then just quitting. And it's going to be more, kind of like almost like a scientific process where you have steps and all that stuff, but it would be it would be videotaped, I guess. So would it be kind of like a documentary? Not not so much like a documentary, but you know, it'll be it would be like. So the way I have it kind of thought out is that. So let's say it doesn't have to be any s s something necessarily bad. Okay. It's just, I, it, it could be something that's like good, but then it, you become addicted to it. And so like, let's say the the example I used was was Twinkies. And I was explaining it to Rachel. Okay. And so, so let's say this guy never had a Twinkie in his life, and so he's basically sitting at like a white table, and it's just like a like like an experiment, and like it says like step one introduction, and it's like the guy standing there and it's quiet, you, you know, something like that, and then it's just like a Twinkie on a plate is slid towards him, okay. And then he like kind of looks at it and you know, picks it up and sniffs it or something and then takes a bite out of it and like kind of, you know, oh, okay, yeah, that's, you know, pretty good. I can see why people like that, but, you know, whatever. And then he puts it down and then like, step two would be like, like, um, I don't know what you call it, but like a second try or whatever. Okay. Where it's like, maybe he's, st you know, still sitting at the table and then a Twinkie on a plate, like, like kind of rolls by him like mm -hmm. on like a conveyor belt or something and he doesn't pick it up at first and then he like kind of looks at it again and then he's like okay and picks it up and eats it and then the third step is uh addiction yeah. and and uh it's it's like quick cuts and he's just like he has like six twinkies in each hand and he's just like shoveling him into the mouth into his mouth okay. like trying to eat them as fast as he can and then uh the fourth step is just, it's just, it just says quitting, and then he's just kind of standing there looking at the camera, and it's just like mounds of Twinkies around him, and then that's it. Okay. That sounds very interesting. I'd like to see what comes out of that one, too. Probably not a lot, so. <laughs> it's really only funny to me, I think. And that was the first and last episode. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, those are very interesting. Like I've just said, like a second ago, but I I would like to see if if there is a way that we can uh, produce some of these videos and some of these ideas to keep keep you know this channel full of full of creative content and uh, not just us uh, doing some chit chats, but having us actually have stuff up for people to see. Mm -hmm. And we also have. The secret project, uh, which is uh, which we're getting help with, on uh, someone else, and uh, yeah, like like we said, it involves someone that we all know and love. But cool, Thompson, do you have anything or no? All right. All right. Okay. What about personal projects? Like uh, Andrew, do you have anything personally going on? Uh, like, uh, are you are you back to blogging yet, or not yet? I'm gonna try and get into that um, a little bit more, maybe next week. Okay. I gotta buy my domain name. I think I'm gonna go with the with the title of um, a typical American. You follow okay. me? Like like it like that's atypical, mm -hmm. but then like saying you're just a typical American, but atypical. So like a double meaning. Yes. Or yeah. I think I'm gonna go with that title. Is it gonna be is it gonna be stuff that we've seen on Crooked and Lazy, or is it gonna be something new? It's gonna be. I mean, it's it's gonna be. All the posts from Crooked and Lazy will probably be there, but it'll be more towards just like things that I notice and the way I do things differently, I guess. Okay. Um, so more about just kind of like you and how you perceive what's going on around you. Yeah. I guess more going against the green. Okay. Things. That's cool. That sounds so pretentious. 
No, I mean you're just you're just writing what you're noticing, and you're just you're pointing out what you're noticing. So that's that's it. And people can I like listen. The title. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, people it's a pun. can. Hmm? Yeah. I like pun. And I and I made bread today. Oh, nice. Yeah, bread is so. delicious. Yeah, it's a uh, honey whole wheat bread. Ooh. That sounds very good. I think next week I'm gonna start making beer. What? Yeah. Good. Well, let good. keep keep us up to date on that. That sounds very interesting. That's that sounds. <coughs> I'd like to see how that turns out. Okay. Right, um, Thompson, what about you? Personal projects? How's the book? Oh, it's it's going. Uh, I haven't really made a lot of the progress on it. I did write a smidgen for something unrelated, but uh, oh no, <clears throat> my creative process is stupid in that it's largely non-existent for large periods of time and then all of a sudden I'll be like well I feel creative and I'll sit down and type for a couple hours and then I'll be like well I'm done mm -hmm. and there's I haven't found anything yet that can spur the, the process artificially amuse if you will uh, that's that's so true for me too but anyway is, is it kind of like you need you need that something to inspire you and you need that something yeah. to hook you in mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. <clears throat> oh, uh, I, I, I feel like maybe just because I'm in such a not fun situation in life right now, you know, it's like a dead end job that doesn't quite pay enough to meet, make ends meet, but pays enough to make, keep me from going bankrupt immediately. I'm just on a slow downward spiral, mm -hmm. and I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm working on getting a, a slightly better paying job. I have a few leads, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious whether getting into a more stable situation would, would provide a more, uh, fertile creative environment. I'm, I'm just, I don't know, only one way to find out, right? Yeah, that is true. true. I think that's kind of where we're all are in right now. I mean, like, I, I'm kind of in just crossing into that situation where things are slightly more stable than before. Because <clears throat> I come home from work in an absolutely terrible mood. Uh, I don't want to... Like, I just hate the world, and what I'm writing is essentially a children's book. And so that's not the correct mindset to be in when you're trying to write that. I can understand. Well, hopefully, what? Okay. Hopefully, something will come out and something will inspire you. Um, it, it, sometimes you have to just look for it, and sometimes you got to take time out of your day to just feel like I don't know. I guess to relax and kind of let ideas flow. Um. I don't know. No, that's that's something that that I, I heard. Um, there's this guy. He's a designer. His name's Aaron Draflin. And he did. I watched one of his speeches, and it, it's odd for me to do something like that because his speech was an hour long, and I wow. Like I watched the whole thing, and I felt totally fine about it for some reason. There were some things I didn't agree with him on, but um, he was talking about being creative, and he was like. He was like, you have to, like, you have to set time aside for yourself to do what you want to do, even if it's just a little amount of time. Like, if you work nine to five, work until four fifty-eight, and then those last two minutes, use it to create or like put something down. Like, think about something that's not work, that's totally unrelated to like your work situation, and try to like. Cause you know you, you you know those those little pocket notebooks field notes. Yeah. He 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 made that. Really. But he, yeah. He 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 made it just like 
he did it um, like out of I guess I guess almost out of necessity, but he did it just on his off time. Like he like he created that on his off time. That's really cool. Yeah, and so he was saying like you know use those two minutes or whatever time you can you know even if it's like if you wake up like a you know ten minutes earlier or something like that use those ten minutes or some you know whatever. Yeah. But I you know I thought that was that's not a bad idea. I'm trying to do something like that. But. Yeah, and like. I was uh, watching, a, there's, a, there's a show that I watch on YouTube called uh, Film Riot, and um, there, there was a question brought up to him, and someone was asking, it's like, how do I, how can I um, take, or it was, how can I make time to be creative, or how can I make time to turn, or make a hobby out of... <clears throat> doing video work and stuff like that and he he said the same thing it's like you have to make time to be creative you have to set time aside to do some of the stuff that if you want to do it then you have to set time to you have to set time to do it rather than um i mean we can always sit down and turn off our brains by watching tv or playing games i mean i enjoy playing games but i also enjoy making creative things mm -hmm. um but it's that's the that's the hard part is you got to make time if you want to be creative you got to make time to think about how you want to be creative how do you want to um, tell your message or write your message or have it have it read or have it seen so I think uh, I think that's a common misconception with a lot of people where they're like oh you can't you can't force creativity and I was like well are you just gonna wait till something happens for the moment because like there's there's parties that that are for like um, like you can only be creative when you're not trying to be creative like it's mm -hmm. like spontaneous. And there's other parties where it's like I actively thought about this to create it. Yeah. And the reality is that it's both. Like it's both spontaneous and you do have to think about it at the same time. Like you can't just be sitting there playing a video game. And you're like. Oh, I just thought of a new way to uh, create a more fuel-efficient car or something like that. Yeah. Like, that kind of stuff you have to delve into and work on. Yeah. I think, I think it's like, you can't force creativity, but you have to make time for it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, would you agree, Thompson? Yes. I mean, I, I'm not good at making time for it. But I do agree that you can't force it. Like, my little bursts of creativity I get, actually, they are when I'm playing a game or when I'm doing whatever, but I never have... They actually, they usually happen at work when I don't have time to create time. Like, yeah. if I'm at home, I can, you know, I can pause whatever game I'm playing. But like, that's a really good idea, and I'll write it down, and I'll... <clears throat> do a one-man brainstorm where I'll, you know, just, like, write down all the ideas related to it, and I'll try and expand upon it. But if I'm at work, I, I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Ah, shit. Uh, and then I'll pull out my phone, and I'll go to the notepad feature and start, you know, I'll type out everything I can, I can think about it at that moment without, you know, having my supervisor look over and be like, who are you texting? I'm like, now that I'm writing down an idea. <laughs> like, what? So you're not texting. Okay. But but yeah, you, you do have to create time, and it's easier in some environments than others to do that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Well, what were we talking about? Oh, personal projects. And that was Thompson's. That was Thompson's personal project. My personal projects, I'm updating my website. Anyways, let's go into the middle <laughs> section. <laughs> Uh, in the middle Sorry. section, no, it's fine. That was very interesting. Um, I just noticed that we, we probably been talking about that for maybe I don't know, like fifteen, no, maybe like ten to fifteen minutes. But yeah, we're at we're at the twenty six Ooh. minute mark. Okay, well let's let's go into the middle section, which we will also spur up a conversation again, and that is, tsunami. Tsunami has just been. Uh, I think today for this recording, it is the fifteenth of May. Um, 16th. 16th of May. <laughs> I so. always seem to be a day behind everyone else. 
Uh, today is the 16th of May, and, to, <laughs> and Cartoon Network has announced that Toonami is returning uh, to Cartoon Network, or I guess Adult Swim, on May 26th. And hearing that has made me overjoyed and brought back uh, memories about old Toonami. And, like, what what are your thoughts about uh, the revitalization of Toonami? And, like, what were the things that you watched on, uh, on old Toonami back in the day? And anyone can go. Thompson. Um... Yeah, I never. As, as much as it pains me to admit it, I, I didn't. I didn't really watch a lot of late night Cartoon Network back in the day. Mm-hmm. I remember. I remember when Toonami was on. I remember it was on, it, it was in the afternoons, and then it got moved. Uh, I think there were several animes on it, uh, and also that was when they showed uh, Space Ghost. Mm-hmm. But other than that, um, I kept changing Tom. That's... Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't really make a habit out of watching it back in the day. But I did miss it once it ended because I started watching it more and more as I grew. You know, after I wasn't a kid anymore and I should have been doing grown-up things, I'd be like, "Oh, hey, tsunami's on." It's okay. Uh, we're all we're all in our in our early twenties, and we're still talking about cartoons and tsunami. So it's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, it was like I, I think I just graduated college when it ended. I was like, man, I don't have school anymore. I can stay up all night watching cart. Oh, it's canceled. Oh, okay. But yeah, I have to. Uh... I have to agree. I was sad when it um, when it ended, and for me, it it really started. I guess in I want to say I started watching it. I I want to say middle school. Yeah, I would say starting watching it in middle school with uh, I saw Dragon Ball Z, and uh, the show that really got my attention was Outlaw Star because that was on there, and I don't know. Outlaw Star is one of my I have to say one of my favorite animes that. I've ever seen, um, and that's where I saw it first, and I it it, it kind of got me interested in what other types of anime uh, is out there, and I think that was kind of like the uh, gateway to to newer newer um, newer series or or different series, and then. I remember there were many, many revisions of Tom, and I think, was it at the very beginning, was it Moltar? That yeah. Was, yeah, it was Moltar. Yeah, Moltar on, was he on Ghost Planet hosting it? I think so, yes. yeah. Yeah. And then, and then it it transferred to the, to the or, it, it was weird because Toonami had like a, had like its own story too. Yeah. Cause Within they, it, bumpers. Yeah, because they would do, like, like they had different characters and things like that that, not really developed, but like there was a there was a short like, almost something to keep you entertained at all times. Yeah. There were points when I would be watching, Toonami or whatever, like Dragon Ball Z <laughs> or whatever, and would look for, more forward to, the cut. Like like the. The bumper of, you know, next time on Toonami thing, because there would be something interesting about it. Yeah, between all of the talking and Dragon Ball Z, the talking yeah, about who's stronger than yelling. who. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z never went anywhere. Yeah, I'm just powering up spirit bombs for six episodes. <laughs> Let's see what everyone discs. else is doing. Yeah. Or powering up their super special attack, and then they realize that nothing happened. Yeah, they blow uh, up the entire world, and it's like. What? <laughs> but so what? What kind of uh, what kind of shows did you watch on there, Andrew? Did you just watch Dragon Ball Z, or did you watch? I watched um, all of thing? them. <laughs> I, I watched I, Sailor I, Moon. I didn't watch Sailor Moon. No, I didn't. Okay. I you did said all watch, of them. 
I watched I, I watched Toonami pretty religiously actually um, because when I when I came home from school I, st- I started watching it around the same time that you guys did like around middle school mm-hmm. I think it I think it started to come on like in seventh grade or something like I think that's when I started to discover it from my older brothers, mm-hmm. and um, but I, it it would be coming on right at when I would get home from school, and then the first show was always Sailor Moon or something that I didn't want to watch, but after that it was always like Gundam Wing or or Dragon Ball. I watched Dragon Ball just because it was a cartoon, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but it had Zoids and stuff on there, and it, it actually really made me like anime a lot, because, like, like you said, it was, it, it was more of a gateway, it, 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 it was almost a gateway to Adult Swim, to like, because Adult Swim had like Bebop and Trigun, yeah. and stuff like that, um, later at night, but... Uh, I also really like the, and we were talking about this earlier, before the podcast, but, um, the, like how they would do, they would just run all of the pilots for, like, for new shows, for new shows in a row. Mm Mm-hmm. So, like, I remember there was one, oh, man, I can't remember the, the name of it, but it was some really skinny little white kid, and he had, it was about, like, him house sitting or something like that and he contracted some crazy virus called Salmonella Fitzgerald <laughs> and it turned him into a big a big black lady that sang it was Ella Fitzgerald and it turned, <laughs> turned him in and he he would sing like like scat and like doo wop and whatnot and that's what the di- that's what the disease made him do what yeah there's also um there's also uh, the like the very very first ever Family Guy. It was before Seth MacFarlane made. Uh, made Larry and Steve. Guy. Yeah, Larry and Steve was on. I there. loved that show. Yeah, and it well, was, that was that was originally on what a cartoon. Yeah, that was. And. Uh, I, that was something I watched. Yeah, I watched I watched what a cartoon too. Yeah, but they had like Cow and Chicken, the first episodes of Cow and Chicken. Powerpuff Girls, the one yeah. with the uh, Fuzzy Lumpkins. Yeah. Courage the Cowardly Dog was on there too. With the de- damn chicken. Yeah. <laughs> All the pilot episodes, those were the best ones. And yep. I don't know. I thought I thought that was. I'm excited for it to come back, but I hope they. Because anime nowadays kind of sucks. Like, I mean, there. I know there's gonna be people out there that probably disagree with me, but like new anime, there hasn't been any new anime within the last five years that I've really, really wanted to watch that badly. Yeah. And, like, um, the most popular animes at the moment, they have a back catalog of a lot of episodes. Like, I I really enjoy the animes that are maybe, like, 25 episodes long that have Mm -hmm. kind of, like, a beginning, a middle, and end. Um, But I also enjoy One Piece, even though... (laughs) What episode are they on, Thompson? Or, like... Oh, they're on, like, 500-something. Yeah. I'm actually going to start watching One Piece, I think. Okay. When when you get to where I stopped, let me know. I think I stopped at like 311. So, I stopped uh, watching Naruto for that specific reason. Also, Naruto started to suck, just along yeah. with Bleach. Well, that's, I was going to bring that up. Um, see, I never watched uh, much Toonami, because I never... I didn't get that early anime... Uh, like ability thing. I lost track of that one. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't have any gateway series on Toonami because Dragon Ball Z sucked and I didn't really have any interest in anything else on, on there. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until college when my friend Nader was like, uh, he's like, hey, do you like anime? I'm like, not really. He's like, well, you'll like this show. It's about uh, how do I put this? It's about ninjas, and they're from different countries that are based on like elements, like there's clouds, and and they do stuff, and it's really great. I'm like, that's the worst summary you can give for anything ever. <laughs> and and then because we're, you know, 
we were just kids and this wasn't illegal yet. I'm I'm making myself feel better by saying that. Uh, and we were on the, the, the university network. He, mm -hmm. he would send me like 20 episodes of Naruto at a time in wow. like 30, 30 seconds over I, like AIM. I got, I got my episodes of Naruto in high school from a guy named Daniel who would burn me a CD of them that mm -hmm. had like episodes one through five and like like i would just go to school every day and i would uh like we'd sit there and talk and stuff and like i'd buy him a bag of chips or something and he would give me the disc it was like a drug deal <laughs> like, for way geekier purposes but yeah i get like 20 episodes at a time and then finally i was like okay i'm ready for the next 20. he's like oh no we're up to current day you're gonna have to start downloading them every week i'm like what oh, no that's always the worst feeling i have to wait point. and once i reached that point with one piece i sort of that's when i stopped watching the anime i, I just read the manga now but uh I, I hated waiting every week but um what was uh Sorry about laughing earlier. <laughs> Ryan just sent me the link to Selmanara Fitzgerald on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, I, we should be focusing on this podcast. That was my bad. But yeah, after after liking Naruto, then Ryan was my roommate in college at the time. Uh, well, the next year, Naruto was my freshman year and sophomore year. We were roommates, and he was like, "Well." I'm gonna start watching this anime called One Piece, and I was like, "Man, that looks stupid." It does and, look stupid. It looks like an anime for kids. And then after, like, I refused to watch it, but I was sort of watching it from across the room whenever he was watching it. <laughs> yep. And then finally, I was like, "Well, okay, fine." And I watched it, and I liked it better than the Naruto or Bleach or any of the other ones that were popular at the time. And then. I was like, well, if I like this, I might as well give other things a shot. And so he had DVDs for, like, Outlaw Star, and I really liked that. Or, or Cooley Cooley, or... Oh, man. Uh, Cooley Cooley is insane. And so I was like, man, what have I been missing all these years? And then I was like, all anime must be great. And I was like, oh, it's not? Oh, okay. Uh, what did you yeah. watch that wasn't? Uh, I've seen a lot of animes that have been terrible. Bo 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 That that was on Toonami too. Yeah, it was. Um, I hated Loop. Loop in the Third. You didn't like it. I did. I did not like Loop in the Third. Although the song was catchy. Loop in the Third. You know, it would be a good show to bring back to Toonami. Oh, what is it? Gear and Login. Oh man, Spiral Power. They should they should uh, put that on there because that should. seems Rave, to be Rave. the manliest anime I've ever seen. It is the manliest. They should put anime. Rave Masters on there. Yeah. <laughs> they should put a uh... disclaimer. I only like Rave Masters because Real Big Fish did the uh, the American theme song. Yeah, <laughs> stupid. They should put a uh, Yakutate Japan, which is the Yakutake bread. Yakutake Japan. They had the the bread anime. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I love that show too. Also, oh, Prince okay. of Tennis. That's a good one. Prince they of had, Tennis is... They did have Prince of Tennis on Toonami. Well, well, they they had it... They had it on Toonami... Was it Jet? What was their... Uh, oh, the um, online... Their Jet Set Radio? Thing? No, that's a different thing. <laughs> um, and then they, like, showed it for, like, three or four weeks on the actual channel, and then they took it off and just played out the rest of the first season on... On the online and then got rid of it. They stopped localizing it, I guess. Mm, By the gotcha. way, if um, if you ever are wanting to buy anime, go to Game Exchange because well, I was there. I was there when I was in Denton, and uh, I was going through their anime, and I was like, "Ooh, Trigun!" And I it was like the complete series of Trigun for ten bucks. I'm like, really? Wow. And they had Outlaw Star there too for like fifteen dollars and. All of Samurai Champ Lou for really cheap and like it's crazy. Ryan, didn't you get like the last disc of Outlaw Star for like a dollar or something? I got it for two dollars. I got I, the, the disc that I was missing was the first one because that was the most expensive one back in I don't know like 2006 or something. 
when DVDs... It was horribly mismarked at Hastings. Yeah. I saw Product placements. All of that. <clears throat> but, yeah. Well, we, we better stop talking yeah, about we, anime. Because we, we have a question like... to answer. Okay. On to the question. On to the question. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. So here we are in the qu- <laughs> We're in the question section. And earlier today, I uh, posted on Twitter, which is uh, at Cold Mornings, if anybody would like to follow us on Twitter. I asked, uh, does anyone have a question? And we have a question from Woody Man, which is Woody Man G1. And his question is, Cold Morning, why am I so awesome? And so, we will tell you why you are so awesome, starting with Andrew. Woody Man, you've asked the wrong question. <laughs> and there you go, that's the end of the <laughs> question section. <laughs> no, um... You're awesome... Let's say this. Because you have the gall to think you're so awesome. It takes a lot of confidence to make that kind of claim, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt and say that you are awesome, although I've never actually spoken to you or anything like that. So I'm on the fence, I guess. You're you're halfway awesome, halfway I don't know you. But but good job on having balls. Yeah. I would say this. You get points for saying outright that you are awesome and you'd like uh, <laughs> like uh, information why. Um, number two is that you're a man. Number three is that you're made of wood. A wood man. And put those all together and you have an awesome man made of wood. Which... Which sounds pretty interesting to me, and uh, something that I don't, I don't really say in a lot of sentences until uh, this podcast. So I'm going to say that is why you're awesome. You are a man of wood, and you can proclaim that you are awesome. And that's, that's, that's awesome in my book. Thompson? Um, I don't know, I've seen a few of the... A little bit of the content you've made for uh, as a G1, and it's pretty cool. So that's that's all right. Um, I guess that qualifies for awesomeitude. But um, more importantly, whenever when, whenever Ryan read the question and the, and the tone of voice that he said it, I thought of the uh, the the parody of Penny Arcade that has Tycho is bald and he's, <laughs> why I am so bald. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just pictured Woody Man and you're like, why I am so tree? <laughs> why I am so wood? Oh, God. And then that's awesome, in my mind. <laughs> that you can refer it to a Penny Arcade thing? <laughs> Speaking of Penny Arcade, I'm gonna say this This is the last thing. But Tom, did, did any of you read the one where uh, they wanted more realism in their comics? And um, they, they drew actual versions of themselves, and it's yes. like they're so goofy looking. Oh, it was yeah. They had to, they had to make it a high res for yeah. the new iPad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so they just drew themselves. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I'll, ha okay. I'll have to see that. That sounds pretty silly. But all right, that is uh, we're clocking in on a good forty-five-ish minutes here. So Sorry. You, you guys are giving getting a. Uh, a healthy, healthy dose, and maybe some a la carte of uh, gentlemen's chattery. So, yeah, I think we've had a good time. Thompson, did you have a good time? I did have a good time. Okay, Andrew, you have a good time? Yeah, I'm alright. Okay, well, that's that's the best that we're gonna get out of you, I guess. <laughs> don't um, don't expect don't expect a good answer. <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs> I had a good time. I had a good time. Okay, and I had a good time as well. So. From me and everyone else here, we hope that you have a great week. We will see you next week, and hopefully some new stuff will be coming around the bend when she comes, her corner, and that's it. <laughs> this is an awkward ending, and goodbye. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs>